Well, the start is, uh, me and Mark Doyle, so I'll turn the hair around the mainstream uh, renewable power in Chile. As Doyle, aprendiendo uh, la idioma de Chile, no es castellano. Es un otro idioma diferente con, uh, con palabras más ricas, como buenas y buenas y otras cosas. <laughs> Entonces voy a hablar en inglés porque los argentinos se uh, pueden entenderme y los irlandeses no entienden nada de ellos. <laughs> Also, I'm the last speaker, and I can see some tired faces out there, so I'll, uh, I'll try and be a little bit briefer than my colleagues. Um, really, the main points I want to get across today were examples from a very close neighbor. Chile is your closest neighbor, a very friendly neighbor, and I can see uh, looking on the other side, but um, they have done everything that we've spoken about today, and I wanted to outline to you some of the successes in Chile um, that we've seen over the past few years. So very, very quickly, Mainstream is a Dublin, Ireland headquartered company. We've been in Chile for eight years, one of the first companies down the market there. And globally, we've 444 megawatts in operation. We've 360 megawatts in construction, soon to be 660 as we bring 300 from Chile into construction. We've over eight and a half gigawatts in development around the globe. We've raised over 360 million in corporate finance and raised over 1.4 billion, including project finance, in debt and equity. Um, in Chile, we've uh, 40 staff in the mainstream business. We also have a joint venture with a uh, UK private equity fund, Actus. That joint venture is called Ayala, and they commercialize or bid our projects into the power market there. We have an operational project in Los Angeles, which is uh, about two hours, sorry, four hours out of Santiago. It's been operational since early 2014. That was our first project there. And we won 300 megawatts of projects in the last distribution tender, which is two large wind projects, one in the north near Freire, the north of La Serena, and one down south near Puerto Varas. Those projects are entering construction this month, and they're about to close in uh, mid-June as well. The investment from these two projects alone will be about $600 million this year and next year in Chile. So in terms of the targets that Chile has set itself, and um, it released a, an important document towards the end of last year, December 15, they've, uh, they're looking to have 60% of their total generation by 2035 from renewables, and 70% from 2050. So that will be interesting today to look at how they've performed so far uh, towards those targets. Unfortunately, in putting the presentation on this, uh, on this machine, it lost all the percentages, so you're going to have to take my word for it uh, on the numbers. Today, already, Chile has 12% uh, wind and PV installed. By the end of this year, with what they have in construction already, they will have 18% of their installed capacity uh, from wind and solar. And really, the bulk of that's been installed in the last three to four years. It's been installed very quickly, and that's all wind and solar. So their forecast on this basis is to get to 45% by 2040. I think a better stat is to look at what's been installed over the last year in Chile. And um, so between March 2015 and March 2016, 3,300 megawatts have been installed or on site, and 99% of it is renewables. So the yellow is PV, the purple color is wind. So the bulk, nearly all of the generation installed in Chile over the last year has been renewables. The, uh, the bar on the left is the previous year, and you can see the red is thermal and the blue is hydro. So there's been nothing installed but renewables in the last year, and they've managed to bring 3.3 uh, gigawatts onto the, onto the system, onto the operational and in construction. Um, next, I thought I'd look at the power price in Chile historically. This is looking back as far as January 2013. When we entered the, uh, when we entered the market in 2008, Prices were regularly up above $150 per megawatt hour. Looking back over the last three years, you can see at the start, uh, the price there was about 120 and peaked up to about 250 um, in the middle of 2013 and stays mostly above 100 for the past, well, for most of 14 and 15. However, towards mid-15, um, the price from May 15 onwards, the price starts to drop to the end of 15, where you can see the price is below 50 here. The price has stayed below fifty dollars. Thank you very much. The price has stayed below fifty dollars in Chile since then, which is where it is now. It's the price on the spot market in Chile. Why? Um, the entrance of renewable energy projects at a large scale over the last number of years 
has reduced the price and the entrance of renewable projects has brought competition into a market that had a highly concentrated uh, generation sector with three or four incumbents controlling most of the market. Obviously commodity prices have dropped in the last couple of years as well. There's been an increased participation of hydro and also Chile has uh, had an economic slowdown in the last year or two which means that demand has dropped. However, looking at the long term forecast of the spot price in Chile, this is from Sistex, over the next 10 years they reckon the price will stay below $60 uh, per megawatt hour and over the next 20 years you can see up at the peak here at 70 that Chilean power prices will stay below $70 per megawatt hour over the next 20 years. This is from average prices between 150 and 200 over the last three to four years. So this is a very significant adjustment in the price in Chile. Most interesting, I would say, is looking at the last three distribution tenders in Chile. So Chile, uh, Chile's regulated market is about 50% of the entire market. So the distribution, the distribution companies who sell to private customers and small uh, industrial customers, they have to tender out their power each year. So if you look back to 2013, which was the last year that didn't have any renewables participating, the average price was 130 US dollars. There was only six companies that submitted bids and actually won. Um, the first tender that took uh, renewables was December 2014 where 18 companies submitted bids and the average power price was $108. The most recent tender, which was in November last year, November 2015, there was 38 bids, mostly renewable <coughs> companies, and the average price was $79 bid by Main Street. Uh, and we won 65% of the total power tender <coughs> in that tender. That's a 38% drop in three years, a 50 US dollar drop in three years for 50% of the power market in June. So your nearest neighbour is proving to you that if you do adapt and embrace renewables, and as Eddie said, and as have said, if you have an open, transparent process and you allow renewables to come in, it will bring down the price, it will bring in more competition, and obviously you're meeting uh, all of your climate change goals as well and putting out a lot, a lot less CO2. So that's my last slide. Um, you, as I said, you will bring down the price. Um, you can bring in new international entrants with new international finance into the Argentine market. You can add new generation quicker than any other uh, power source. As my, my two previous speakers have said, you can bring a solar project on within 9 to 12 months. You can bring a, a wind project on, depending on the size, between 12 to 18 months. No other <coughs> technology can come anywhere close to that. And the <coughs> closest is probably new gas. We'll be talking five to seven years after that, coal and nuclear will come much later. It's clearly the lowest cost, as Vanessa has proven as well, and as the Chile power tenders have proven. All of this is good for customers at the end of the day, um, and is key to enabling um, Argentina meet its climate change targets. The last thing I would say, because there isn't that many Chileans in the room, is there is a much better wind resource in Chile, or sorry, in Argentina than there is in Chile. Um, not just a little bit, um, a significantly better uh, resource. There's also a much better grid system ready to go, built out to have a 500 kV network across the country ready to take electricity. So, if anything, the government's targets of 8 gigawatts by 2025, 1 gigawatt this year, they're not too big, they're too small. And you're going to look back at these targets in five years and go, why didn't we think a little bit bigger? We met the Subsecretary for Energy today with Eddie and he was talking about the, the country needs 20 gigs by 2025, of which half will be renewables. Why can't the 20 gigs be renewables? Why do you even need to fill the other 10 gigs with uh, new gas or new coal? So look to your neighbour, look to South Africa, look to the other countries that have opened up and embraced renewables. Give it a chance and it will deliver for you over the next five to ten years. Thank you very much.